Hey everybody, welcome to the next installment of VR Funhouse uh, mod Twitch streams. Uh, talking today more about um, how to mod VR Funhouse uh, and really get you into some of the nitty gritty when it comes to flex. And uh, we'll also show you a little bit at the end here flow. So uh, just to recap what we went over last week. We, uh, we really got our, our feet wet with flex. Uh, we spent a lot of time on mostly fluid uh, in all the relationships there, um, you know, squirting out of the clown painter gun, uh, and changing some colors around, changing gravity, etc. What I wanted to focus on today predominantly is soft bodies, rigid bodies, and cloth simulation within flex. Uh, this is set up uh, different than the fluid stuff, which is all done through Cascade. This is all going to be done through um, basically the static mesh editor. Uh, a couple things that before we really get into this, I wanted to show you guys. If you do have questions um, or comments uh, or concerns or anything like that, um, you can always uh, post them here in the chat. Uh, what else you can also do is I will pull this up for you guys and show you. Let me find my... I need to get my drink out of the way of my monitor so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, there is on devtalk.nvidia.com. Uh, you can actually go through here, uh, join, log in, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, we actually have a section specifically called modding. Uh, we do have a VR Funhouse modding forum. Uh, myself, uh, a few out of the artists and engineers are, uh, are on and do what we can to pay attention to everything here. Um, so if you have questions, concerns, comments, you can jump in on the dev talk. Uh, and we will do everything we can to try to answer this in a timely manner. So uh, again, you're going to find a lot of extra good detail uh, when it comes to what you actually are going to want to do um, for the mod kit on developer.nvidia.com backslash VR Funhouse Mod Kit. Again, that is on the Epic Games Launcher. So if you want to go there as well, we got to get started uh, modding on VR Funhouse. Um, the page that you're really going to want to know a lot about for this one is going to be um, under Flex Usage in VR Funhouse. And this is, this is uh, some very specific things that are only in Funhouse on this page. Under See the Flex Documentation, this is going to be your holy grail of information for uh, all of the flex integration into UE4. So how you set up emitters, how you set up forces. We, we didn't actually use ropes in VR Funhouse, but they're super awesome. Um, so make sure you check out the flex rope actor as well when you're in here. Uh, this is where you're going to find a lot of the great um, detailed information about how to use flex. So. Obviously, we only have uh, 30, 40 minutes here, so we'll get to some kind of high-level nitty-gritty. All right, so we're back in the Fun House Editor. Welcome back. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is the Wacky Wall Walker. So let me go ahead and uh, we'll play this, and I'll show you what I am talking about. Um, I, I've, I've uh, upped my resolutions. Hopefully you guys can read this a little bit better this time around. So uh, the wall walker is going to be, I believe, our sixth sixth game. Oh. I had the number wrong. It's going to be actually, I believe, our fifth game. I went one past it. Uh, the whole point of the Wacky Wall Walker is we actually have, uh, let me get my hand here, these cute little soft bodies that you can push around a little bit. You can pick them up, get really in there, get a big pick. Uh, and they're squishy, they're jiggly, they're everything you wanted in a soft body. So how do, how do you make one of these of your own? Uh, so there's, there's a, a very specific, specific process that you go through here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do just like we did uh, in the previous tutorial, is I am going to zoom on up here. I'm going to change this to, uh, I believe the name, let's see what the name of our map is. Wall Walker Base 2. Then the next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to make sure that I'm streaming in the light right light right light when I start this level. Pile our main level. And let's make sure I did it correctly. All right, so now every time we start the game, we're going to start right into the wall walker. Um, I think what I would like to do is uh, I would like to take just any old mesh. So right now we have this wall walker mesh, and I would like to kind of show you guys how to turn that into a soft body. We'll just, we'll start that. We'll start with this really simple process of converting from a regular actor into a soft body. Um, again, this, 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 uh, we're going to go ahead and reload the user VR base too, so we can avoid the whole lot of things in here. And I'll take it to the process of how we're spawning these. So right now, um, we have this VR button. Uh, this is where actually, if you go into the, the level logic for the wall walker base 2, um, you'll actually, I believe, it is up here at the top, spawn wall walker. And again, the search function is so nice uh, for blueprint. Um, just look for spawn. We have actually would have found it down here as well. All these nodes for spawning the wall walker when we do it. Um, we are actually spawning a blueprint actor. Let's go to that. Wall walker, small actor, blueprint. Open it up and show you what it's composed of. The actual blueprint actor itself is basically doing some really simple stuff when it comes to uh, changing the color um, when we spawn new ones. So we've got a random, uh, we got a dynamic material instance that as it comes in, it fades in. Uh, and, and we only currently allow, I think, four, four active at once. So once you hit above four, we uh, fade the last one out and destroy it. Um, so that basically, there's nothing really super special to the wall walker itself, uh, especially in this blueprint. It is literally just this static mesh component, as you can see here, that has been converted to a flex actor. So let me take you through this uh, step by step with first creating... Um, the static mesh actor, converting it in, internally into a flex soft body, and then getting the they're converting the asset to a flex soft body, and then putting an actor in the level, converting that to a flex actor, and having some soft body goodness. So I want to find something to turn into a soft ball, a soft body. I think I'm going to go for. Let's go for the baseball bat. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to make a new folder here for today. Let's do folder live stream. Oh, not live stream. Live stream stuff. I'm going to uh, get my baseball bat. Copy it in there. And open it up and let's start with step one. Uh, so you, you the static, standard static mesh at this point. Um, I'm going to put this side by side with the wall walker and you're going to see that it's going to look uh, quite a bit different. So let me find that wall walker blueprint under here. Wall walker. Our static mesh for the wall walker. And open that up and we'll pull them side by side. So right away, uh, me, unfortunately I don't have those nice easy Windows 10 snaps set up on this machine. Uh, right away you're gonna see something looks pretty different about our flex soft body actor and just the standard uh, baseball bat primitive. We've got all these, these spheres in here, uh, a lot of these uh, you know standard transform uh, diagrams. Uh, what all this is, is this is telling you that this is a flex actor. These, these particles are actually representations of the, the flex particles. Um, there is a, a button here on the, if I make this big enough so you can see it, uh, right here, which we'll actually draw these. So this is our standard mesh. This is how it's represented uh, in the flex world. Um, on the left hand side here, we also have the flex number of particles, number of shapes, 
uh, and springs, these are going to be pretty highly dependent on your performance. You know, the more particles, the more springs, etc., the, 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 you know, the harder the performance is going to get hit. Um, so how did we get to this point? Uh, how we do that, let me drag this over to the side here, is this is just a box, or a baseball bat that has been imported as a standard uh, kind of UE4 asset. You're going to scroll down and find this lovely area called Flex. Um, you have three options. Three options are going to be cloth, soft body, or solid. So solid is is just is basically rigid bodies. So it's going to be a uh, a particle based GPU rigid body. Um, soft bodies is in cloth are, are hopefully explanatory. So we just go here and go flex soft asset. This is going to convert it into a uh, flex soft body. There is a host of parameters here, um, and this kind of all deals with how to get this guy to look like the guy that I just showed you. Um, now I'm going to make sure, I'm going to do what I can to uh, make sure that, that I don't put all of these underneath the window. Um, looks like we should be good when I scroll. Uh, I, I, I really highly recommend you guys look at the documentation for just what these mean. They are, if you actually go over it, everything is tool tipped. So if you really are kind of like, what? What in the world is cluster radius? Um, it does give you a tool tip, but the documentation is going to even dive in there a little deeper. Um, flex as it sits right now, similar to how we talked about it last week, a lot of these parameters can be interdependent, and it's going to be a learning curve. I'll just, I'm just going to do a nice fair warning there that there is a learning curve to um, understanding how you kind of want to keep these together. Um, and it's going to be a bit of trial and error as you try this out until you find uh, some good parameters that, um, you know, if I have something the size of a baseball bat, how big do I want this particle spacing to be? Uh, and finally, uh, another comment here is some of these are going to be interdependent as well. And actually, the, the positive point is that the, the tooltip will say this. So particle spacing to use when creating particles should be approximately the radius of the container of this asset. Um, we talked about containers last week. So that's actually going to be what I would consider step one, is selecting your container. Um, I'm going to use the same exact one that the wall walker used. Uh, I can pull this over here and show you the, the flex container that the wall walker used. It's going to be flex wall walker VR container 3. Um, so I will click this. Um, the nice thing is it's filtered just by the available uh, flex containers. I will grab that. And right away, now that I've attached a flex container, you will see um, some things happen. Right now, I, I, I do see at least something. Um, the flex container, uh, the, the, uh, since I already know what the parameters are of this flex container, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what the values are I'm going to use here. Um, particle spacing for this is going to be something around like 1.5. Uh, you can go a bit bigger, a bit smaller, uh, but you can actually see here we've, we've gone ahead and we've, whoa, extreme close up. Uh, we've, we've gone here and filled this whole thing with particles up the wazoo. Um, now it's time to kind of start we've got this 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 soft body has almost 4,000 particles it's a lot of particles probably too much we're gonna start walking this back a little bit um, we have the volume sampling uh, which you want to bring down as well it's just kind of how much the inside gets sampled as you saw how incredibly clustered that middle was that's entirely unnecessary um, we can we can have the, the the middle be quite a bit less sampled so we can bring that down you see we we just chopped our number of particles from 4,000 down to 989. Um, surface sampling is going to be used if you're doing like a like a flat sheet um, or something that is not enclosed. You'll want to really mess with the surface sampling. We don't need to really mess with that. Clusters. Clusters are, if you've done, you know, uh, the best way I've been able to kind of uh, tell myself what this means is that um, if you've ever done any soft body stuff with like tetrahedrals, uh, it's kind of a similar concept, the clusters are. Um, this value is going to, so this, this one I, I've kind of come to the conclusion of is I, if I get this thing to look right, then I have the light right cluster sample. So I'm going to bring this down. Um, you'll actually see it's creating more of these, these uh, individual clusters. I don't want it to be like super dense. Um, we also want to bring the radius down. Uh, which is kind of how, how much they're going to overlap. So we'll bring it down to like five. This is kind of what I 
this is what I meant by this is kind of visually what I'm looking for. I'm looking for kind of like a a hairy object. <laughs> I kind of want it just kind of look hairy, and that that's way I know like I've got a good enough good amount of clusters and stuff like that. Um, you know, up at thirty, obviously it looks it looks funky is about the best way to put it, right? I don't have a a, a nice even uh, distribution of these clusters. So we'll bring that down to five. Um, there's some stiffness value here uh, and, and some other stuff that I'm not going to go through right now. These are more for kind of getting real nitty gritty with it. Um, the same with the skinning and fall offs and uh, max skinning different distance. These things are important for if for some reason some of your, your mesh is just not getting in here it's not being part of the simulation mesh it's not getting skinned properly we have some adjustments you can do to try to make sure that happens um, the uh, the next one to talk about is phase which we said in the previous video was uh, related to kind of how this is going to collide with itself um, we want to change some stuff to make it behave like the wall walker we want it to self collide um, and we also want it to attach to rigid bodies. So if we uh, spawn it inside a shape or something like that, we want it to actually just like the stick there. Um, let's go ahead and save this. This is technically, you have done the setup. At this point, you have set up this asset. It should be a good soft body. Um, we. Uh, we now need to get it in as an actor and put it into the uh, into the actual level. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm going to close this, and we're going to go ahead and find our asset because I made a nice folder in here. I thought live stream stuff. And we're going to drop it in. So I'm just dropping this in as an actor. All right, here we go. Um, so this, if, if I hit play, this will not work. <laughs> uh, I can go ahead and do that for you real quick. So, uh, hey, look at that. It's doing nothing. It's just a regular old static mesh. So this is not the, this, there's an additional step that needs to happen. Um, this is uh, get, luckily this is all documented, um, so don't worry if you uh, kind of miss it here. But we go ahead. We're going to click on. We're going to pull up the details for this. We're going to search for convert. If I could spell, which I cannot apparently today. Convert. Uh, we're going to select the type, and we are going to go to flex actor. Uh, this will actually show up on the side here now as a flex actor. Um, and I believe we should have... Hey, there it is! It is now a on the ground as a... Let me get my hand here. I might even be able to pick this up right now. Yep, now we have actually... A, this is like the opposite of the bat you would really want. Um, this is probably similar to how I felt when I played T-ball as a kid. Uh how I felt my bat was because apparently I couldn't hit anything. <laughs> so this is kind of the simple setup to make yourself a soft body. It, this is like so jiggly and fun. I really enjoy playing with soft bodies. That's like a worse joke than anything I had last week. So uh, like I said, I can use Q to kind of reset my view here. I'm sure on the bottom left screen I look absolutely ridiculous as I do this. Um, you could I'm sure you can find many, 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 many use cases for a soft body. Woo! So let's talk about anything additional um, we kind of wanted to talk. So, so this was just, that's it's all you have to do. That is all you have to do. You've now made a soft body. Now it's kind of up to you to go through and tune, tweak, uh, have fun with all the parameters. Um, where most of all these, these, these good time, happy, fun time parameters are going to sit in your flex container template. So let me pull that up. It's always nice to do live stream and the actual asset turns into a soft body. Um, that always makes you feel happy. Uh, you're gonna come down here um, and you're gonna have all these these kind of 
especially when we're talking about the wall walker, um, we have things such as adhesion, uh, restitution, friction. Uh, these are all going to be really important ones for, you know, the surface parameters of the wall walker or whatever you're going to do. Because, like, right now the wall walker is really sticky. Um, and that was adhesion. You know, you kind of crank it up higher and higher and higher. It's going to stick more and more and more. Um, that's where some of these parameters are actually going to be the, kind of the surf, surface parameters. Um, that all that stuff with the clusters and all that is going to be kind of more your uh, internal parameters. How stiff it is, uh, you know, if, if it's a real jiggly soft body or if it's a real stiff soft body. Um, those are mostly going to be in the actual asset parameters with the clusters and everything like that. Um, there, I, I'm going to tell you right now, though, there is one additional component that's going to really affect the visuals of your soft body and that's going to be related to the simulation parameters so number of iterations number of sub steps um, that the lower sub steps you go the lower iterations you go there's the more loose and flowy your soft body is going to be um, the reason for that being is it's just not going to be resolving the simulation quite as fast so it's going to be a little little like i said it's going to be a little loose a little flowy stuff like that um, uh, you obviously go up, it's going to get stiffer. So many bad jokes. All right. So that is a flex soft body. Uh, kind of the other things to talk about are, um, would it be possible to make it stiff on one side and jiggly on the other? Uh, as it sits right now, that is, it, we don't have a, kind of like a paintable surface parameter. Um, you, would, you would almost have to kind of do that via via multiple act actors, honestly. Um, you could uh, attempt to chain them together. So no, that is a great feature request though, um, which I will go ahead and take to, to the Flex guys. Um, this is, like I said, this is still on 4.11. We've actually had some improvements to Flex since then uh, with 4.13 and uh, subsequently uh, soon to be 4.14. Um, but uh, that's a great one. I will go ahead and write that down and send it to the Flex guys. All right, uh, let's talk about rigid bodies real quick. So I'm gonna actually uh, find this baseball bat. We're going to duplicate it again. I'm gonna delete this one from my level. I've already had my fun with you. Uh, and we're gonna come down and scroll to our flex asset again. Uh, so I wanna talk real quick about solid assets. Um, this is this has got some really fun properties. Uh, again, I, I highly suggest you guys check out the documentation because there's a lot of use cases for Flex we did not use in Funhouse. Um, you can, there, there's a shape fill emitter so, and, so you can make like sand castles and all sorts of cool stuff. So uh, I really hi highly recommend you check out the documentation because it's all in there, like all these different cool use cases. Um, so this is again, it's gonna be similar, similar flow. Um, you know, you're gonna go ahead and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do the wall walker again. You're going to go ahead and select a container. Uh, this is just a much simpler amount of parameters. It's going to be down to finding your sampling again. Um, the one that's going to kind of make the most sense. It's going to fill it up solid. Uh, if I was making this bat out of flex, um, I would actually do a new container. So let's just, you know, let's uh, let's take our time and let's let's go through that process. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this container and say uh, flex rigid body and pull that up. So I'm probably gonna increase my radius to something like something like five. Um, gonna click that off. Oh, oh uh, quick fun fact for you. Um, if you are in your level and, um, oh, I need to actually pull this onto the screen. Ha <laughs> ha, let's do it on the side. I, I took this radius from 2.5 and moved it to um, one fun fact for you is that if you are uh, working with max particles and you have it kind of underneath what you're uh, what you're uh, what you're seeing, um, you might see flashing in the level. So something like that might um, might happen you might actually get any flashing you might get some weird uh kind of weird flashing that happens that's like if you've ran out of max particles and it can't actually spawn it so um delete 
delete some guys. Maybe you have too many of uh, that actor in the level. It just basically means you, you've used up all your max particles and it can't spawn the rigid body. Um, so uh, I'm seeing something in our chat here that maybe the California guys are not seeing this stream, um, but we are getting some confirmation from outside the stream. Uh, so maybe it's actually the guys in California that aren't seeing this. I'm going to keep talking. We'll go, we'll keep going. Uh, if you guys aren't actually seeing this, I will go ahead and put it up on YouTube and put it up on here for you guys to look later. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep going. I increased the radius to 5.0. I'm going to save this. Close this off. Go to our baseball bat. And I am going to go flex rigid body. Actually, okay, this is what we wanted to see. We saw this this particle amount increase, uh, like visually. I, I still think this might be too big, but uh, we're down to 432 particles for this rigid body. Realistically, we probably could simulate this is, we'll say this is probably pretty good for right now. We'll save our baseball bat. We will go to our live stream stuff and push this bat into here. I'm going to pull up my details panel. We're going to go ahead and um, attempt to spell again, which apparently, I, hey, I did it right the first time. Incredible. I'm going to uh, duplicate this a few times. Ooh, I should be within my particle budget. And hit play. And I've got rigid bodies. Let me grab my hand. Where are you at, hand? And I should. Yep. So now we've got flex, uh, flex rigid bodies. The hope here is, is so. So the beauty of all this is, you're like, wow, great! I can just do a rigid body, but now I'm doing a flex instead of a <laughs> instead of a normal rigid body. Um, the beauty of flex is, it's all uh, it's all works together. So what I can do here is I can now, if I had um, if I had soft bodies, I had fluid, I had cloth, um, they all, I, I could actually like drape a uh, flex cloth over this, I could spray fluid on it, I could drop a soft body on it, and they're supposed to all be able to interact as long as they're in the same container. Uh, I, I, did, I did mention, just drop that big bomb on you that yes, it would have to be in the same container. Uh, so make sure that you are working within uh, working within that same container. If they're all in the same container, it's just one big simulation mess, and you can just do some crazy stuff. Um, the one more thing that I want to send your way that I hope will catch your eye. Um, I, I don't have time to dive deep into it today, uh, but under flex cloth, flex cloth is going to be the final one. You'll actually see, like I said, in the intro level, there's actually those curtains that open up, and that's actually the flex cloth. Um, there's a couple things you can do. You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and just we'll go ahead and try to show this real fast. Um, I will go ahead and grab this flex cloth container. Smooth three. Do not reuse. Uh, I'm going to reuse it. Sorry, Terry. Um, this is the the flex curtain container. Is um, Obviously, you, you, this is just the standard kind of cloth simulation stuff. If you've done any cloth simulation, it's it's all going to be pretty much knowledge that you might already have. Um, it's going to, all the parameters kind of work the same as like the soft body stuff do, except for it's more, this solver is just going to be much more uh, related to cloth. Um, but it has this, it has two fun check boxes um, that you can play with. Uh, there's inflatables and there's also tearing. Um, tearing does work. Uh, you might run into occasionally a bug in your mesh um, that might, uh, that might cause some some odd confusion, uh, and it's going to be probably related to skinning. But but generally, my my experience, uh, we didn't use it in Funhouse, so we didn't do a whole lot of testing yet. It's kind of an experimental feature, but it does work. Um, so I, I do. If you're interested in tearing some cloth, uh, definitely try it out. It does work, um, but your mileage may your <laughs> your mileage may vary. Uh, and we also have uh, the inflatables. Inflatables so are just kind of like another way of doing a soft body. It's just going to look much more like an inflatable. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and like overpressure this to two. Uh, you can see right now that this asset's not tuned properly 
at all, right? I got 7,000 springs. Um, but I think it should... Famous last words here, folks. It should just work. My all crash in a blaze of glory. There it is! Look at that. It's like a giant, weird sausage baseball bat. Uh, I'm actually going to pull my camera over here so I can get a nice close-up. So this is a, an inflatable cloth ridge body. It is, uh, it is, it is a, a glorious, glorious thing. Um, I don't know, it kind of looks like a, a weird sea lion at the moment. There you go, it could be a sea lion simulator. He, he doesn't really look like it wants to go anywhere. So this is the inflatable. You'll see it's just, it's kind of just like a much more, it's just an interesting variation uh, on kind of a jiggly thing. Um, I mean, this is what I love about Flex, is, is, is this is kind of stuff that just isn't easy to do without some sort of like real simulation. Oh no, come back. It's down there, I can't reach you. So those are the uh, those are the main ones. Um, <laughs> those are those are the main fun things you can do with flex. Uh, that, like I said, there's there's also a rope simulation. Um, there is uh, the flex particle um, fluid fill, so you can do stuff like I said. You can fill volumes with it. Uh, there's kind of like a sand. Um, demo you can do as well so uh definitely get in play there's just so much fun stuff with uh flex that i wish i could spend like 20 hours on this and i probably could um so the last thing i wanted to talk about uh real quick got to give you a little teaser for next week is uh talk about flow so we're gonna move over to the i'm gonna delete my my uh sea lion simulator Great mod idea, by the way. Totally sea lion simulator. And we're going to go to the bow and arrow level, meaning that since I just want to make this easy on myself, I'm going to stream wall walker base. We're going to change that to bow base to pilot. Let me make sure that was actually what the name. Yep, that's what it's named. So let me pop this level up. And the asset we're going to be talking about real quick is just this guy right here. It's just kind of a simple um, fire. Uh, and you're probably wondering how in the world I got it working. So uh, there's a couple quick concepts with this version of Flow. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll cover a lot of this next week as well. But um, as it sits right now, there's, there's two main components. There's the flow emitter. And there's going to be the, the shape of the flow emitter. So uh, how this is all kind of hidden from you by default right now so let me pull this down and that's just for the ease of of our guys' visualizations we actually have under uh, the folder fire we have four spheres these are actually flow emitters um, we can go to the details and pull that up you'll actually see uh, there's a flow emitter which is just a wall of parameters I apologize um, wall of combustible parameters uh, and then there's actually just a static mesh and the static mesh is where the fire will spawn or in this case it's going to be like the fuel um, UE, uh, the funhouse integration is limited to two shape types um, it is limited to a sphere which uh, this is actually a uh, special um, a special collision type it's a sphere collision type uh, as you can see here add sphere and it's also limited to a box collision type now these can be scaled and stretched but you can only use a sphere or a box um, we have not released flow publicly funhouse is currently the only place you can play with flow um, you can look for future updates as to when flow will come to mainline or not it will come to our uh, github uh, for ue4 um, there has been some improvements uh, to that. We we've added convexes as shapes as well. So you're, this is this is a temporary limitation, but uh, right now it's 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 limited to spheres and boxes. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and go to this, and we're gonna make this so we can actually see. There we go. Hit visible. 
you actually see these 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 uh, these flame balls. So I'm gonna move this out here. Or turn our camera again. Where are you at? Where are you at? Sorry, we're actually like in the flame. <laughs> Um, oh, I just moved the static mesh, didn't I? Okay, let's see. Where's where's this guy at? Let me let me get this rendering properly. Uh, visible. Let me move back. I'm gonna duplicate this out here, actually, so we have a couple emitters. Move back and. Well, that's interesting. All right, so we're having a little problem. For some reason, I'm not getting my fire. <laughs> uh, that's always uh, a, oh oh okay. Actually, I need to go ahead and go to my level. Make sure I'm actually on here. And we'll grab all my current emitters. Move these over. There we go. Now we're actually moving properly. So let me redo my queue, turn us around so you can actually see the fire. So these actual spheres are uh, what's doing the fire. Um, if I separate these a little bit, let me grab one, move it over. Should hopefully, there we go. You actually can see that that is the sphere that I just moved. Uh, this is where it kind of emits from. You get this kind of, this nice fiery look here. Uh, if I want to make that fire bigger, you can actually just scale it. Oh, I misclicked. We're going to go ahead and scale this up. And now I've made a giant ball, wall of fire. <laughs> uh, let me scale that down a little bit. I lost my details window, so let me pull that down. Uh, let's pull that down a little bit. There, that's a more reasonable giant ball of fire. Uh, so you can just scale these emitters up and down. You can actually see this is now the shape of it. Uh, so like I said, this is kind of where it is spawned from. This is like the biggest fire ever. I don't know why I went so crazy with my initial fire size. Let's get, let's get something slightly more reasonable. Okay, there we go. Um, that's a little bit more reasonable of a, uh, of a giant flame. Um, there's all sorts of, there's, there's two things you're going to need to do this. Uh, like I said, next week is when we're going to actually go through how to build these emitters and everything. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a quick teaser. There's only two components that you need. You also need a flow grid actor put in your level. This grid actor is actually where the simulation um, is going to take place. Uh, if you've used turbulence in the past, uh, the big difference between flow and something like turbulence is that uh, turbulence, you, you'd have a kind of a small grid. It'd be like a, it'd be a square vector field, right? Um, if you go to actually, if you go to the level Balloon Knight, uh, which is the confetti, uh, you will actually have um, a grid actor. Uh, these are going to be kind of your grid actors, and, and it's going to be your, you're going to be in this kind of limited space where the turbulence will work. Um, and there's actually going to be forces acting on every single little part of that. Um, flow is sparse, meaning there's only going to be simulation happening where there is fire. So you can make that simulation space much bigger for a similar cost. Um, that's kind of one of the big improvements here. Uh, like I said, there's going to be a ton of different... Um, let me pull this down. A ton of different parameters to play with. Um, we'll, we'll go through as many of them as we can next week and try to give you guys a good idea of you know, kind of how to make fire look how you want. Um, like I said, there, there's, there's various things about like how much fuel you're going to put in there, uh, the temperature of ignition... Um, and et cetera. So it, it, this will take some time next week for for me to help you guys get your head wrapped around, uh, like how does combustion work? Uh, this is very much as it sits right now, based in reality. Um, obviously in computer game reality, but uh, a lot of a lot of things you would think of when it talks to actually generating like a 
fire simulation and something like fume or everything like that a lot of a lot of similar concepts apply so uh hope you guys enjoyed the soft body simulator we had today um and enjoyed me creating a fireball the say is the size of probably my entire town here uh next week join us back again we'll go through all these cool flow emitters and we'll show you how to do uh what we'll probably like light our hands on fire or something like that i'm sure we'll figure out something maybe we can actually take that sea lion simulator uh, never mind never mind all right uh again thanks for everybody for uh joining today um we will get the last week back up on youtube and on twitch um Unfortunately, I did not get that up for you guys, so we'll get that that one and this one up today so you guys can rewatch and see anything that maybe you missed. So, again, thanks for joining in, and we'll see you next time.